Hi everybody, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm coming to you with a book review for The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. This book, oh my goodness, I loved this book. This is my favorite Ruth Ware so far. It has everything, a gripping mystery, twists, um, unique setting, you name it, this book has it. This follows the story of a woman named Rowan, and it is actually told through a series of letters and emails, which I thought was very unique. I really liked that. And we know from the start, from these emails or letter, I should say letters, that she is writing to a lawyer trying to convince him of her innocence. So we know from the beginning that something has gone terribly wrong. She was a hired as a live-in nanny for this couple with um, four children, and one of the children dies, and she is in prison for the murder of this child, and she's claiming she did not do it. Um, right there, it grips me, it pulls me in, and I'm interested to see throughout her telling her story and telling everything that has happened from basically the minute she decided to take the job to the tragic death of this child. And I was absolutely blown away. There were a couple of things that I figured out, but the really major things I had no clue were coming. And I am usually very, very good about figuring out twists and turns in advance. I think it's part of being a mystery writer myself. So for that to happen, I was just completely stunned. And upon finishing the book, I was sitting there with my jaw was like literally hanging open. And I just stood there, sat there staring at the page for probably two or three minutes. It was very, very unnerving, and I loved it. It was, it was unnerving in the best way possible. It really was. <clears throat> so there are uh, supernatural elements in this that I actually was not aware of at the time, but I loved that. I see absolutely nothing wrong with a good ghost story as long as it's done right. Um, but when Rowan takes this job, it's kind of in like the foothills and it's a very, very high tech. It's like a smart house. The uh, people that own it are architects and it was like an old fashioned house that got converted. So like part of it is still old fashioned and part of it is a smart house. Basically, it's completely run off of technology. There's cameras in every room. And it's just, it's kind of creepy in the sense that you know somebody could be watching you at any moment. So as soon as she gets there, these parents leave the very next day. And they're leaving her for a week with their three youngest children. And the oldest one is supposed to come back at the end of the week from a boarding school. So she's got a 10 year old, a 10 year old and an eight year old, I believe they are. And then, uh, an 18 month old child that she is looking after. Now the children are a little bit withdrawn at first. Um, one of them seems to like her, but doesn't want to get too close. And another one just wants nothing to do with her and like purposely keeps trying to provoke her and get her into trouble, like when the mom would call and stuff to check on them. So she's wondering what's up with these kids. She doesn't think something's quite right. She automatically feels from the beginning that the husband is a little bit of a perv because he was hitting on her. And she's, so I think she's like, the money is too good, but something isn't quite right here. And she starts experiencing things from the first night that she is alone in the house with the children, hearing footsteps above her head. And she knows there's not another floor up there. 
So she starts trying to investigate where these noises are coming from and discovers that she has a locked door in her room that, as far as she knows, leads nowhere. There's not another floor. So she's thinking, okay, it must be an attic. She can't figure out how she's going to get in there. But eventually she starts hearing um, more noises and all these really creepy things start happening. Um, the children's behavior gets more erratic. She, on the first day that she's there, the children are like playing on the property and she goes out looking for them. And when she comes back, the door's wide open and the housekeeper's there scolding her for locking the children out and she didn't lock the door. So, I mean, there's just all kinds of things from the absolute very, very beginning. And she starts talking to the handyman about this attic. She wants to figure out where these noises are coming from. She's not getting any sleep. And she feels the children know something, but they're not talking. Um, I want to go back to the interview. When she actually showed up for the interview, the oldest child, the one that is the most, most withdrawn and doesn't seem to want anything to do with her, when she left, this child hugs her and says... Don't come here. The ghosts won't like it. So she's thinking about the noises and she's thinking about what the child said. And she's like, I gotta, I've got to get in there. I've got to figure out what's going on. So the handyman, like, finds this, you know, he goes to his massive key ring and he ends up finding the key and, like, basically busting his way into this door. And at first glance, it looks like a closet. Somebody has boarded it up and like turned it into a closet. And she's like, it doesn't make sense. Why would somebody lock a closet and like basically get rid of the key? The master keys on his key ring. There's not another key to it. So they start investigating it more and realizing there's a draft. There's something behind that wall. So they tear down the wall. And sure enough, there is a staircase leading to an attic. And when they go up there to investigate, they find like all these scribblings and stuff all over the wall saying, we hate you, go away. And all kinds of other like really ominous stuff like that. And she's like, okay, somebody has definitely been up here, but there's not another entrance. This was boarded up. At this point, she's thinking it might actually be ghosts and she is the target. I don't want to go into this anymore because it will get very, very, very spoilery. So I will just say that the turns were extremely, extremely well done. They were captivating. I was on my on the edge of my seat the whole time. Like I said, the ending just had me in shock. It's been a long time since I've been like that over a book. So definitely, definitely check this out if you are into mystery thrillers, if you're into paranormal at all. You will absolutely love this. Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. It's a five-star read. Go and pick it up today. You will not regret this. I promise. Okay, so that is all that I have for you guys today. If you liked this video, please make sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!